These meadows at Bloom are fantastic sources of food for pollinators and probably the most cost-effective way that you can help. And that's the beauty of it. You know, you can move really easily from an area of shortly mowing grass into a naturally regenerated meadow really easily. You just need to be patient, you need to manage it properly and you need to let those flowers grow again. So there are two types of meadows that you can create. One is a short flowering meadow, that's where you just reduce your mowing so you mow maybe every four or six weeks instead of really regularly. And what that does, it just lets things like clover, dandelion grow and give, provide food for pollinators. The other option then is to have a long flowering meadow and that's where you just cut once a year in September and you remove the cut away again. With long flowering meadows, there's three things that you have to remember in terms of management. The first and the most important thing is that when you cut your meadow in September, you have to remove that grass cutting, so you have to take it away. And you know, I've been to long flowering meadows, some of them in the very first year, they look amazing. You know, some have bee orchids and all sorts popping up, but that's really unusual. And it's all to do with the fertility of the soil to start. So if your soil is very fertile, what happens is that fast growing plants, so the grasses, things like thistle, um, hogweed, nettle, those things, you know, take advantage of those higher nutrient levels and grow very quickly at the expense of the slower growing uh, wildflowers. So what you need to do is take your grass cut off um, each year, that gives the soil fertility a chance to drop and it gives the wildflowers a chance to establish in your meadow over time. The second thing to remember when managing a long foreign meadow is that it doesn't just look after itself, there is still a bit of work involved in it. So what you need to do, and particularly in the first few years, is to remove those really fast growing plants, so things like thistle, hogweed, nettle, ragwort. Just come along and take those out of your meadow, just dig them out and remove them. And those plants are good for biodiversity but if you leave them in your meadow, they tend to become quite dominant. So it's better to take them out each year. You know, your meadow will establish then into, into a much more species rich resource going forward. And the third thing with a long foreign meadow is that you have to be patient. You have to give it time to develop on its own. And most long foreign meadows go through various different stages. So often they'll start out species poor that's where you've got very fertile soil to start. So what you end up with are grasses and those fast growing plants, you know, the docks, the ragwort, the nettles. So again, you have to remove those plants and then make sure that you take the cut off each September to allow that soil fertility to drop. I would say that in some sites, you might find that the grass growth is so strong that you need to do two cuts a year. And in that case, it's okay to cut in July and then again in September. And after a few years, you'll only need that second cut in September. And the other thing is, I think this is the one stage, that species poor stage, that's the one stage when it doesn't look that good to most humans. So I think if you're gonna have a meadow on public land particularly, whether it's a park or a verge or a roundabout, you just need to think really carefully about where you decide to put it. You know, so and maybe try to choose a site where the soil is better to start with. After the species poor stage, what you tend to find then is it'll move into species sparse. And what happens there is that you might get buttercup or oxide daisy predominant. And that's a really good sign. It looks good and it's moving in the right direction. What you can do at that stage is you can add yellow rattle seed to your meadow. And yellow rattle is a hemiparasitic plant. It suppresses grass growth and it gives the wildflowers a chance to grow. After that stage, you're moving into moderate species richness. And around us here, this would be an example of a moderate species richness meadow. And that's where it's starting to look a bit better, a bit more colourful. You're getting a range of different plants coming in. Again, it's not anything fancy. You know, it's the birdfoot trefoil, it's the clovers, it's knapweed, it's vetches. But super for pollinators. And again, it's moving in the right direction and becoming more and more species rich year upon year. That's where if you marked out a one metre square, 
you might find up to 15 plus species in there. Those meadows are super, you know, it's now settled into itself. It gets better year upon year. It's there for the long term. It's fantastic, looks fantastic, brilliant for biodiversity. And you know, what a legacy to leave for, for, for biodiversity and fun for people to enjoy. Just some pieces of general advice on meadows. Firstly, if it's a big area, it's a really good idea to cut paths through so that people can enjoy the resource and also so they know that it's intentional. It's also really good to put a sign up again so that people know that what you're doing is deliberate and that it's an action to help biodiversity. Something else is, again, particularly on public land, it's really important to think about where you decide to put your meadow. You know, as I said before, there's some sites that will be better than others. You might also need to bear in mind that some sites might be a litter trap and to avoid those because otherwise you'll have to walk the site for litter before you're able to cut it in September. And it's also important to think about September in advance because that's when you have to go in and cut your meadow and take that cut away. And for small sites you might be able to cut it and, and lift it, rake it off. But for bigger sites you might need to come to an arrangement with a farmer who comes in and bales it for forage or you might need to have access to specialised machinery like a zero grazer. And the last thing I suppose to think about is that meadows look super. You know, they really come into their own from June right until mid-August. But after that, they start to look a wee bit dead. And that's when it can be more difficult for humans. But it is really important that you tolerate that dead looking stage just for a short while, just into September before you cut. Because what's happening is the plants are dropping their seeds. And if you let those seeds fall into the soil, then you'll reap the benefits of your meadow the following year.